Hi everyone, thank you for joining my talk today on what makes civic tech initiatives to last over time. My name is Andrea Hamm, I'm affiliated with the Weizenbaum Institute for the Network Society and the Technical University Berlin. So let me present you my great colleagues. Um, this research has been done with Yuya Shibuya from University of Tokyo, Stefan Ulrich from the Weizenbaum Institute and Tessie Sirajo Pikmin from Stockholm University. So let's have a look at our research gap. Uh, civic tech initiatives dedicated to social or environmental issues have become a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, these initiatives made invaluable contributions in terms of data, community building and outreach. However, such technologies sustained use remains low and civic initiatives are often only short lived. So we asked what makes civic tech initiatives sustain over time? and which factors ensure the long-lasting use of civic technologies and the evolution of the initiative. So the first case is Luftdaten Info, which is dedicated to particulate matter pollution and based in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, this initiative has mobilized more than 8,000 volunteers from 73 countries and installed over 13,000 sensors worldwide. The second initiative is SafeCast, dedicated to radioactivity pollution and particulate matter pollution based in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, SafeCast has mobilized 5,000 volunteers from 102 countries and managed to install 5,000 sensors worldwide. So what did we do? We um, conducted a mixed method study uh, based on different types of data. We did in-depth interviews with the core team members and we collected the initiative's historical Twitter data and we reviewed the online and public materials, uh, for example, media articles or blog posts. Um, we conducted social network analysis and qualitative content analysis. So, for example, on the right side, you see the results of our social network analysis um, with the annual Twitter networks uh, ranging back to 2011 and 2015. And here you see how the Twitter networks of the initiatives actually changed and evolved. Uh, it's also important to mention that in contrast to previous works, we did not conduct action research. So our key findings are basically uh, the different factors that are uh, connected with the different phases of the evolution process. And those factors are um, helping the initiatives to sustain over time. So in the emergence phase, um, in the beginning, there is an issue of public interest, which is tackled by a competent core team, which uh, designs together with their initial background network, low barrier technologies. And uh, they publicly communicate about this technology, these technologies and the data that is created about the, uh, with these technologies. Um, principles of openness and access to resources allow um, the community to grow. And uh, the growth phase is then marked by the data being applied by established institutions. So there is, for example, local governments or local media institutions um, which make use of the data of the initiative. And uh, this process um, may attract new community members. And this, again, increases the data sets, the number of data sets and sensor stations. So then the sustaining phase uh, requires further networking to ensure a continuous funding. And the initiatives uh, took many efforts in online and offline community building to uh, improve their technology and their data and to keep the community vivid. And uh, this actually has allowed them to adapt also to changing contexts. So then you see in this graph uh, that all these factors um, located around the faces actually build upon each other. And uh, we also saw that the growth and the sustaining phase can reoccur during the evolution when there are new network partners, for example, or new groups of community members. So long story short, what makes civic tech initiatives to sustain over time is more than just the technology design and the application. It's the initiative's whole ecosystem. It's the variety of interlinked factors, actors and technologies. So in the paper, we further discuss this ecosystem in terms of real life impacts, openness and inclusiveness, public narratives, empowerment and power structures. Thank you very much for listening and take a look at our research paper if you like. And I'm happy to take your questions.